have you checked the children? Oh, oh, hi, I'm Chuck. Hey, Chuck. Hey, Chuck. Hey, Chuck. Hey, Chuck. Hey, Chuck. What's up, everyone? Welcome back to the Horror Show. I'm Cecil Laird. I'm in Fuego here. We're here to do another patron request from our friend, our family, our brother from another color mother. That is Sam Glass. Uh, Does that work? That's the first time I've ever said that. I think that works. I would hope so. From but another Samuel color has mother. Been yeah, so works, yeah. blessedly supportive, dude. We freaking love you, and uh, we appreciate the fact that. A shout you out are... to you getting a new bed to fight that sciatica, brother. Yeah, and I also, and also it. the fact that you clue us in to a lot of earlier films, whether it's you know Dead and Buried or uh, Phantom Squirm, of the Paradise Phantom or Squirm. Of the Dead, no, yeah. no, I know I you knew Phantom that, but I, I didn't. Ha I well, haven't seen it. Well, so. also because Homie from Phantom of the Paradise is actually in this movie. Who? The main guy, the main friend, like the Phantom. The Phantom? Yeah. Who was he in this? Glasses. Yeah. What are we reviewing? We are reviewing none other than Eaten Alive. Toby, oh, yeah, okay. Toby Hooper's uh, 1976. Wait, I think it was. Glasses guy. Which one was it? Oh. That's him. Yeah. That's him, the guy who arrives with his lady and with the. Yeah. And gets taken out early. He's like the first one to was, get taken I guess out. It was like kind of early, you know. It's the first like, third of the movie. Yeah, true, true. Um, we yeah, are talking Eaten Alive. <laughs> Toby Hooper's, I, I believe. His follow-up to uh, Texas Chainsaw. Texas Chainsaw. Yeah, because this was 1985 and Texas Chainsaw was 1984, right? Um, or was this 1987? Texas Chainsaw was. Uh, oh no, 1970, 70, yeah. 70 something. It was. Yeah, and this was 70. It was 70. It was 74, wasn't it? Six, say. Okay, so is okay. Forgive me, I got the wrong decade, Sorry. but they're still no, just fine. two years apart. Mm -hmm. It was 74 and 76, Indeed. not Indeed. 84 and 80, 85 or 86, like I said. Yeah. Thanks for making me look stupid. Like <laughs> not, not intending to, but I mean, as far as overall impressions, I think that this was very similar to the Texas Chainsaw approach, where you had kind of, kind of nasty possibilities. This was that, down and dirty. D well, well, still, still concept-wise, down and dirty and nasty. But uh, as as was still the case in the '70s, more often than not, it was the '80s when we got gratuitous with our gore. The '70s was more so leave it to your imagination, and I think the '70s my, was gratuitous with the nudity. Truly. And we had our fair share in this, mm -hmm. if I'm not mistaken. Three know? different ones, I believe. Yeah. So so for that reason, I mean, I guess my inner gorehound wanted more crock chomping nastiness. And we saw, like, you know, bites and pulled into water and stuff like that. You know, we this, saw some chewing. This, this, this proverbial swamp. But but as a whole, I, Sam, I'm sorry, I didn't love this one. It was my first time watch. Um, but guy. there was still... There was still an enjoyable element of schlock to this one, most notably Robert Englund and his infamous line, which is at the very beginning where he My scares off Buck. Where he scares off a woman that he's just paid to have sex with. He's and just tr he's trying to he's trying to do a doggy style. She's like, no. And then he's given a two for one by the creepy old woman who runs. And the then like house not and... like two hours later is like hitting on other girls at a pool hall. Hey, <laughs> like, I mean to have that sort of sex a drive. Libido, like, buddy. Props, my man. Libido. I remember my twenties. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> In any event, uh, yeah. So I your overall thoughts? Not so happy. So 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 so. I mean, it was like two and a half to three for me uh, out of five. Obviously, um, okay. didn't love it, but I mean, I couldn't talk a ton of smack about it. It did really reek of being on a sound stage for a toby hooper film in comparison with uh you know texas chainsaw was very much on site in the aforementioned state and so uh, this one felt like it was trying to be hollywood but had some problems from a budgetary standpoint perhaps no so. i agree with that I, I will say that i actually enjoyed this movie um i've seen it before when i was younger and i always mm. remembered liking it because i'm a big you know ed creature guy and i remembered mm. a lot of people getting eaten in this what I didn't remember were how lackluster the effects for these Eatons yeah, go. Yeah. So, but here's the thing. <laughs> Even though the eatings were lackluster, the movie itself was so chaotic in its story and its presentation. And there's no true, like, final girl or final guy. It doesn't follow the structure of most normal horror movies. Besides, even, maybe the little girl is the one that I would make. Yeah, but even that, they cut away from her for so often, for so long, that you don't... House and all that. that you don't like, there's no guarantee with her. Yes, okay, she's, she's sort of the dangling thread, but mm -hmm. this is still not presented the way most other horror movies of the time were. This is just about a dude that is... 
kind of insane and he's gotten so old that he just doesn't give a shit anymore mm -hmm. um he he has his own morals like like the movie just story-wise it starts out with a girl that decides she is not made cut out for the whorehouse the the town brothel but the one that she fled to so i mean she wanted to get away from under the thumb of her father who comes into the picture later in the right film, along but with she her didn't sister, but, but she didn't want to do what was necessary to be able to do so at the time yeah. in this town yeah so, so she gets sent least. away and she she leaves slash gets sent away and the first place she can go the place she's recommended to go is this guy judd's and it's this old sort of bed and breakfast that is run by this old man that we don't know what necessarily his deal is except he has one attraction which is an alligator so big he calls it a crocodile yeah and um you know people see it and they're like oh cool you know but they just are looking for a place to stay unfortunately he's next to insane and mm -hmm. people start to die people start to become alligator food random people show up throughout the movie it doesn't follow your typical film structure so there's uh you know a a, a husband a wife and their daughter that show up at one point and um as fuego mentioned the daughter is trying to stay alive where the things don't go so well for the mother and the and the and the husband and then yeah. there's <laughs> robert anglin's character who is uh, shows back you know, up one yeah shows point. back up and needs a place to bang another girl and stuff like that so you also have the sheriff component where the he's like where, where, yeah. where yeah yeah where he's trying to like in, in investigate but it's he's just also, chaos the whole he's thing also is chaos. loyal to, yeah. to this guy and admits that dude suffers from some mental illness this is actually a, a, since i've watched a few films like this that address mental illness and where it's not a villainous presence that is like completely cognizant of what they're doing it's more so that nasty detachment that is creating these that situations causes you to grab a scythe and and throw it through some people yeah yeah <laughs> he's still pretty shitty you know and uh, has a couple moments here and there but uh yeah the fact that like, he seems nice at one point, and then he's just, like, flipped his lid at others. That's the one thing about this, where he, he's not as consistent of a villain, which, like, leads to the chaos that Cecil was, you But know, that's what I kind of like early. about it. He's, he's, he's bent. He's not right in the head. And, mm -hmm. like, he's the kind of guy that's, like, you know, he's, he's, he's your friend one second, and yeah. then you turn your back on him. And they'll throw a knife in your back and be like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, mm -hmm. like, I, I like those kinds of crazy characters. We don't get those characters that much anymore. Not as much anymore. And so, yeah. so I like it. And again, speaking to the chaos, this movie ends in pure chaos. Like, mm -hmm. it cuts to the credits just after and in and amongst chaos that is going on. Like, yeah. there's a little girl dangling from her pants over the alligator pit while people are trying to get her from the other side meanwhile someone else is getting eaten in the alligator pit while the while judd is trying to kill people while the sheriff is trying to get back there to stop things yeah it's, just, and doesn't it it's have, chaos yeah and, it's, and doesn't it it's have the like, only movie that really achieves that level of nuts that i can really point to right doesn't off the, it have like a uh, news report kind of stuff at the very yes end, and it's, well, it starts it starts yeah. with one and it ends with mm -hmm. one yeah. yeah it starts with a news report and it mm -hmm. ends with a news report yeah which is like uh, having, sets the tone having just rewatched uh george romero's dawn of the dead it was a thing in the separate mid patreon yeah. You coming soon yeah yeah it was a it was a mid to late 70s sort of thing where you wanted to incorporate the possibility i mean shit didn't he do it didn't toby do it with uh you know those fake news reports for even the original texas chainsaw well it started you with know? that you know yeah it did it did yeah as the as the guys talking over the pictures showing mm -hmm. yep. indeed mm -hmm. so i mean i was i was impressed with you know performance and with that in chaotic uh, chaotic second guessing five teenagers you know like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and the chaotic second guessing, I mean, I it still felt very much performance wise, at least with like some of the horrors that, that we had and you know, the older woman. Did you say horrors or horrors? Horrors. Oh. Horrors at the house, you know, and the older woman There's who runs some the place. Horrors in Hattie's house. You know. There's some horrors in Hattie's house. <laughs> and there was also amusing to, to continue with, with performance, um, you know. Oh, are we only on performance? Oh, we are, we're almost done. We are almost done. We are. We are almost done. Um, but, yeah, I, I actually enjoyed, uh, you know, Sheriff Some might say they're and, uneven performances, but I personally think they all fit perfectly within the film. Based on the weirdness of this particular time in Texas, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, I would say it, uh, 
Yeah, yeah, it kind of befits the, the, the era, so to speak, you know. And the good old boy nature of the sheriff guy specifically and the, the disbelief and the fact that he's close friends with the majority of the suspects in this situation. Um, yeah, you can kind of think why there would be disregard and disbelief and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. so, For sure. Yeah. Um, Effects-wise. Uh... It shies away from most of the gore that I was yeah, hoping Yeah, there's not for. a lot of gore. There is yeah. some eating, but it's really just people in the it's like mechanized so water, mouth of a rubber water alligator. Water struggling. You know, you water see a lot of water Yeah, but, but, the, but the, the problem is the gator doesn't even chew. Yeah. The gator just holds them in his mouth as they struggle, but it doesn't ever move, yeah. and it doesn't... It's the gator is the problem. Like, I would contend... I love gator eaten movies Same. you know oh, like yeah. even the original alligator one and two which was all about people flushing their gators down the toilet oh, and they're the becoming first giant alligator ones in, the, in new york in the is sewer. great that whole dinner party and oh like my the god wedding, dude. whatever i love those is. movies yeah, yeah, i love those so movies. Bad, but this but wasn't so those. enjoyable yeah this was just a a normal size he tries to say it's a giant one a normal sized mm -hmm. rubber alligator that never actually ate anyone yeah. it, it's no, it is no Jaws. Yeah. That's the problem. Yeah, yeah. Despite being like very, uh, not not very far. So removed, I'm kind of I the perfect specify. example. Like when you watch the movie in your in your 30s and 40s, you're not going to be happy. But if it's a movie you watch in your teens and 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 young teens, mm -hmm. it's something that might stick with you because it I did mean, stick with me as a good eating creature movie but now having watched it 20 years later it yeah. is not a good eating creature movie yeah and this being a first time watch for me i guess maybe i was less forgiving in that regard because i've seen alligator that came after i've seen like placid i've seen um crawl you know i mean i've seen this stuff that i think did it significantly better and in a more grisly fashion for my gorehound nasty desires in that regard so so for that reason sam as much as i love you this is another one that <laughs> i'm I'm going to say I was not all about... It was, like, this was more so about the amusing aspect of the over-the-top performance of certain characters compared with the bloodthirstiness of uh, the body disposal. So, Agreed. Yeah. Agreed. Um, there you go. All right, so, <laughs> yeah, I think that's going to do it for our review of Toby Hooper's Eaten Alive. Uh -huh. If you guys have different thoughts, let us know what those are in the comments down below. Thank you Please again do. to Sam Glass for requesting this one. If you guys want to become a patron, the link is in the description box down below. While you're down there, if you enjoyed the video, why not click the like button and subscribe? Oh, hello. Until next time, though, I've been Cecil Laird. Gracias, Jaime and Fuego. And remember, stay, stay scared. Cool. Cool. That's it. <laughs>